Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another workout today with Speed Bench. Now, I'm noticing as I'm getting into the groove here, it takes me a few sets to get fast. So I did an extra set on the Speed Bench, and I just don't have the first one in here because I felt it was too slow. Uh, but even the first few sets were a little slower, and I'm noticing that as I get into the groove, I'm getting a lot faster now that I'm getting used to this new technique. Now, I also noticed that green band needs to be a hair tighter at the bottom. It probably isn't overly a big deal because the lockout's okay. And the red one had tension at the bottom because I tested it all before I put the green one on on the empty bar. So it's what I need to fix because this went up a little bit. I went up 15 pounds, so another 5% for today. And I feel like that's how I need to do my waves on bench. We need to run down as low as 40% with a lot of band tension than 45, 50. Because I feel like for my general explosiveness, um, the standard 50, 55, 60 is probably... Uh, a little heavy for me that I need to get a little more band tension and a little less bar weight to get my speeds where I want them because dynamic work is supposed to be as fast as possible and I'm seeing that it seems to be working better uh, in regards to that but as I get into these are a little faster but next week on this I'll try to remember to pull that green a hair tighter before long I'll be going to the blacks anyways and then they'll, I'll just make sure they're tight all the way across because really that's only five more pounds of total band tension, but I'm just working off my percentages. But it's nice when you're running multiple bands like this, we can fine tune percentages. Uh, so a little heavier, but the speed was overall really, really good. And especially as I got more into it, get a little more aggressive and you push harder, get that better over speedy center, it starts getting really fast. And that's the idea is that you want to move this uh, as explosively as the empty bar. And for those who don't know the math, that's 95 pounds of band tension. So yeah, I'm only running 150 pounds on here, uh, but by many coaches' numbers, that's actually perfect for me for speed work, depending upon which coach you ask. Some coaches would say it's a little light, some would say it's a little heavy, but based upon my own bar speeds, it looks to be about right. So we're kind of fine-tuning for me and my own muscle fiber distribution and current speed where I need to be, because I, I do need to get faster in general. Right? We need more explosiveness. It's something I need more of. Uh, but the 10 triples is nice because it lets you practice your setup. It lets you practice your arch. And this is what I mean about dynamic work. In fact, I think uh, for speed squats, I'm going to go from 10 by 3 to 2 sets of 12. Because I do 20 singles on the speed pulls and then I do the box jumps. I think that would actually uh, work better for my goals. Work better for my goals. So I'm going to run the 10 by 3 for bench from now on. We're going to run 2 by 12 for the speed squats and then 20 singles on the speed pulls. Uh, especially with all the, again, the extra plyometric work and stuff. And the same with the benching. Um, this gives me a good amount of volume. Some people are going to say, Jason, why aren't you doing huge amounts of accessories on the bench days? You're doing obviously quite a bit. And where's the back work? Uh, I'm doing pull-ups every day. I'm doing pull-ups seven days a week. Uh, that covers all my upper back work. For now, because I'm doing that as part of just my uh, metabolic conditioning or GPP, depending on what we want to call it. And as far as my circuit training goes, I'm doing a lot of pull-ups. And I just don't need them on my pressing days. Pressing can be about pressing. It can be about my weak links. And as far as even the chest goes, uh, I'm doing a little more focus on delts and triceps. They still use the chest for accessories. Why? Because I'm doing dips every day. And those dips are giving me a good stretch reflex. It's probably going to bring my chest up, and I'm going to have to see how it does over time. Now, if it doesn't give me the desired results, not a big deal. We can always add more supplemental work. But I feel like at this point, things like my pecs, my back, all of that, they're probably getting about as much total work as I can handle. But we also have to remember we're building work capacity with the other stuff. And that's one of the reasons I made the adjustments of my diet, to make sure that I can keep enough food in to even maintain body weight as my workloads go up from all of that. And then, like I said, I can always, once the work capacity is ultra high, recovery is ultra high, I can always trim food back to, to cut more body fat. That's the beauty of doing stuff like this versus the way certain people would do who do, do serious bulks and cuts. You know, we get into this whole concept that our TDE never goes down. Work capacity always goes up. Neat always goes up. Total energy turnover tends to go up, and then that way, anytime you need to drop some body fat, even if you just say you want to drop three, four pounds of body fat just in a short phase and then keep progressing, it's really easy to do that when you have an enormous energy turnover. You know, when you start burning 4,000 plus calories a day, anytime you want to drop five pounds, it becomes actually absurdly easy. 
right? It becomes absurdly easy. You still eat enormous amounts of food and do it. You simply cut certain things out. Uh, so then we went to the football bar press. Now, someone had noted before that, yo, oh, your lockouts, it's, these are hard to lock, especially for me having that old bicep issue on my left side and the football bar by the nature of it. These are just hard to lock out at the top. So, and I don't care that much about it, to, to be honest, because I'm using this just as a whole front delt, shoulder girdle, upper chest, tricep movement. I'm not that worried. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. If I go back to doing the straight press with a barbell, I'll focus a little more on that. But for my purposes, this is fine. Think about it in terms of what we're doing as an assistance movement. We're just learning to use our core and keep legs locked and everything to use the upper chest, the front delts, the triceps, and to get an overhead movement to get more shoulder involvement. All right, that's all we're doing. That's all we're doing, just to help my bench and thicken up certain areas. And it still works the, the entire shoulder girdle more than chest pressing does. So again, not overly worried. So three sets of 10, the strength has gone up. I was doing sets of eight with that at first, but three sets of 10 on it feels good. Had to do a little bit of rest pause near the end to finish it out. But it hit everything I need to hit. And we'll work on progressing on that, right? It's going to be a good supplemental lift for now. Uh, then JM presses. So that's really the supplemental lifts you guys are going to see me do for now on camera. It's going to be a lot of standing presses with the football bar. A lot of JM presses. Twice a week. And the JM presses are going to get a higher priority in the volume. Mainly because I need the extra tricep. And what people have to remember, a lot of my upper body accessories are coming from all my GPP. Loaded carries, dips, pull-ups. That stuff does a lot of upper body volume. So I'm going to get a growth response from it. There's going to be a, a, a workload aspect of it that increases hypertrophy. So we focus more on the main elements here. We try to make sure the maxes are heavy. They're all I can handle. Max effort work. Speed work needs to be as fast and explosive as possible, so we tune it that way. And then I get the repetition method in with these assistance movements. And for now, it's just two main assistance movements, right? So we end up getting about nine total work sets of supplemental lifts. And again, normally I would say that that wouldn't be enough, even done twice a week, but my other work handles the rest of it. That's the main thing. I mean, when you're doing dips and pull-ups every single day and loaded carries almost every day, um, that has a cumulative effect. So on this, we're just fine-tuning. We're saying which lifts are really going to give me the most bang for my buck in these slots. And I'm really enjoying these floor JM presses. I got to say, I've already done a video on them. It's not going to be out for a week or two. Uh, I'm really enjoying them. And I feel like for me, because we're noticing where, where am I getting weaker on my bench, I feel like off the chest. Well, that's a chest weakness and front delt weakness potentially, which is what's being addressed on other stuff. But the triceps need to be more powerful from the bottom. Now, some of these you guys are noticing I'm doing bent wrist back and then I'm doing bent wrist forward on some sets, trying to find my best groove. And I feel like if I cock the wrist the other direction, which you see me do near the, the final sets, that it really gives me that extra power through that I want. It feel, makes me feel a little more secure coming right out of the bottom. And I've noticed that, that when I get that power right out of the bottom on this, I really, really feel the triceps. Now, it's a different region of the tricep. It's not the way I feel it when I do like the band work with the overspeed eccentric. So there we go, the wrist bent the other way. Now that, when I explode off the floor off that dead stop, I really, really feel uh, that, that medial head of my tricep that really meaty part that helps us on the bench, which is really one of the smaller heads. It's working the whole tricep. I feel the whole thing, but I feel the lateral head, but especially the medial head right there. It's just like it feels like it's been hit almost. You know, not super painful, but you know, like it's been, it's hit, been kind of tapped with a hammer. And I feel it at the end of the set when I get up and start moving around. So again, that's what we want. We want to make sure that we're thickening that area up because we need it for the bench press. And again, I'm getting that, that bottom position this time. I've been doing a lot of stuff for the lockout end, which if you guys notice, I'm fast now on the lockouts on my bench. That used to be my weak link. So now we've got to work all this other end while keeping all the work moving forward. We keep doing the speed work, keep doing the band and chain work. But all these assistance movements, I need to start thinking in terms of what's going to give me power off the bottom. 
I need to get my chest thicker, right? Stretch reflex with all the dips. The standing press to make sure the front delts and upper chest are good out of the bottom. Uh, the JM press is from that dead stop at the bottom. For now, a straight weight, and I'll go back to chains eventually. Really giving me, again, trying to get that extra pop out of the bottom to really get it driving through hard so that I can follow through. Get as much speed as I can off the chest. So that's what my supplemental lifts are now geared towards. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.